Hello, everyone. In, uh, uh, in the following, we're going to start using our uh, knowledge of circuit analysis and a few shortcuts that we have already learned about series and parallel circuits to start uh, looking at a bit more complicated network of uh, components, specifically resistors connected to each other and then uh, connected to sources. Um, so this is an example that we're going to do, and I'm going to start by using the basics. Um, this is my promise that no matter uh, what your knowledge or what kind of techniques you uh, have learned to simplify circuits or you haven't learned those, you can always resort back to the fundamentals and quickly calculate anything that you need to know about a circuit. Now, um, what that means is that it's going to take longer, slightly longer, but uh, it, the promise of a guaranteed result is worth the time that you're going to spend. Um, once you're comfortable doing that, you can, and once you do a lot of that, um, then you automatically learn how to do shortcuts. Uh, but that uh, insurance is is really is 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 is, is really um, uh, give you would give you a lot of confidence uh, approaching circuits. So um, this problem, there might be a, any kind of question asked about a circuit like this. So someone might ask, what is the uh, current that is going to be drawn from the source? Someone might ask, what is the voltage across the six ohm resistor? Or is, someone might ask, what is the voltage the uh, across the 18 ohm resistance? What is the current passing through any one of these components? But no matter what question is asked, the answer to that question is, is still a result of writing these and then doing the math. By doing that, once you're done, you have the answer to everything there is to be known about this circuit. So don't ever doubt yourself on how to solve uh, questions regarding a circuit because it doesn't matter how it's uh, asked you're always doing circuit analysis one day or the other and this is the ultimate solution to it you're going to get all the voltages in the circuit and then all the currents that are passing through the components doing doing that now if you know shortcuts and you're confident how to use them use them at your will uh, but it's there okay so how do we do this we label the circuit. We identify all the nodes. So uh, this is one node, the whole thing. I'm going to take that as my ground arbitrarily. And uh, that's one node. This is another node. And finally, this is one node. Total of four, four nodes. I'm going to start uh, calling them uh, voltage names. This one, I t told you, we can actually say the potential up there is the potential down here plus uh, the voltage of the source, so that would be 120 volts in this case. Basically, I'm using the equation for this component to label that. I'm going to call this one V1, call that one V2. This one is ground. Uh, currents that are passing, I'm going to call that uh, I1. Do KCL for that node, call this one also I1. Here, I'm going to call this I2 and then call this one I3, do KCL for that node, and call this a I3. Now, notice I did a few shortcuts in the way that I was doing labeling. I could just simply say that's I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5, and I would have been dealing with five current currents that are unknown. But the KCL for that node, and KCL for that node, is really simple to do in your head. So you can quickly come up with shortcuts like that to reduce the number of unknowns in your circuit. Um, once you're done labeling all the voltages of the nodes and all the currents that are passing through each component, uh, the next step would be writing KCL for the nodes that you haven't already written KCL for. And in this case would be that node and this node. This node you don't have to write KCL for and you're going to write it for that node. So KCL for the node V1 would be, and I'm going to actually say KCL at V1, would be I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, the current that is going into that node, equal to the currents that are uh, leaving the node. 
Okay, um, there's no other case CL. I'm going to move on to equations for components. Now, uh, we count one, two, three, four, five components. The equation for this one is already done. Uh, there are four components left to write the equation for. So I1 is equal to 120 minus V1 over 4. I2 is equal to V1 minus 0 over 18. I3, notice I'm not writing equations for currents. Don't get this confused. It happens uh, that the current comes first. That's just how I do it. But I'm writing equation for each one of those resistors. That's important to always keep in mind. I3 is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by 3. And finally, I3 for the last. See, I3 again here. V2 minus 0 divided by 6 oh. Okay, so how do I do math here? Uh, like I told you, what you can do is to uh, just randomly do it or use the algorithm that I taught you and inverse the, uh, in, inverse the matrix and multiply by the matrix as, in, uh, the mul uh, inverse the mat multiply my matrix in, and then multiply by matrix of knowns. Um, I'm going to just randomly do it here uh, since I'm not using calculators. So I can take these two, equate them by each other. Uh, by doing so, I get, uh, now I'm going to multiply at the same time, multiply both sides by 6. So that would be 2v1 minus 2v2 is equal to v2. That's 2v1 is equal to 3v2. Uh, in other words, V2 is equal to 2 third of V1. Uh, good. Now I can take these three, put them in there, and also remove V2 and replace it with the V1 so that I get e an equation that is only a function of V1. So I write 120 minus V1 divided by 4 is equal to V1 divided by 18 uh, plus V1 minus, now instead of V2, I say 2 thirds of V1, 2 thirds of V1 divided by 3. See, I have just one equation now. So I can uh, take, uh, so that's, that's actually this whole thing is 1 third of v1, v, this is v1 minus 2 thirds of v1, that's 1 third of v1, that would be v1 divided by 9, that would be 2v1 divided by 18, that would, plus this, there would be 3v1 divided by 18, which is v1 divided by 6. So now I uh, take that and that, multiply both sides by uh, 12, so this would be 360 minus 3v1 is equal to 2v1. In other words, uh, 5v1 is equal to 360, which means v1 is equal to 360 divided by 5. And that's uh, 7... Seventy-two uh, volts. Okay, so now that I have V1, I can put it put it back there. Calculate V2. So from this one and that one, then V2 is equal to seventy-two divided by three uh, times. Uh, times 2, so that would be 72, 2 times 72 divided by 3, so this is 24 times 2, that would be 48 volts, 
Uh, now I can put uh, V1 and V2 in any of these equations and calculate the currents. So uh, down here, be careful, I1 is equal to 120 minus V1, which we set is uh, 72 volts. So 120 minus 72 divided by 4. And that is 8. That would be 8. And then 48 divided by 4. That would be 12 amp. And then you can calculate I2, which is equal to uh, V1, 72 volts, divided by 18. And that is equal to uh, 4 amp. And finally, I3 is equal to 48 divided by 6. That's 8 amps. And we're done. We have all the uh, currents that are un were unknown, I1, I2, I3 and the voltages that were not unknown, V1 and V2. Okay, could I do this any uh, easier, maybe faster? I'm going to show you uh, the trick and then ex try to explain to you uh, how I did that to get to the same equations. I'm going to directly write the equations that I would use uh, and then go back to it. Okay, so look at this. I know if I can directly write I w what the I1 current is. I1, this he here's how I would do it, and then I explain to you what I'm doing. It's 120 volts divided by 4 plus 18 in parallel with 9. Okay, so 18 in parallel with 9 is... 9 times 18 divided by 9 plus 18. You do that, add that up to uh, 4. Uh, so that would be 120 divided by, so 9, sorry. This is 9 in parallel with 18. So this would be, um, this actually would be 6. So this is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. That's 12. Be careful here. That's 12 amp. Okay, look at this. Where was I1? I1 was 12 amp. Out of, out of that, I directly calculated that without doing any of that math. So how did I do that? Here's the trick that I used. I know that I, if I1 is the only thing that I'm looking for, if I don't care about anything else in that circuit, and I'll, all I need to know is I1, what I can do is to say, okay, I'm going to put this whole thing in a box, I don't care what's inside, I just want to know what current goes into this box when I apply a certain voltage to it, right? Now, remember, that's the voltage divided by that current is by definition the equivalent resistance that you see there, right? So what's the equivalent resistance of that box if I do know what the components are here? Okay, so these two resistors right there, they're actually in series to each other. How? because they share the same current, right? So I can combine these two resistors into one resistance, and the value of that resistance is actually 3 plus 6, 9. That's this 9 that you see there. And then once I do that, the equivalent resistance here, the 9 equivalent resistance, so this part of the circuit turns into 9 ohm. Then this 9 ohm resistance is it's actually in parallel with the 18 ohm resistance. Why is that? Because they share the two nodes across them, right? The node on top for the 9 ohm is the same as the node on the bottom.
for that 9 ohm and the 18 ohm. So these two are in parallel to each other, 18 in parallel to 9, right? And then this whole thing then is in series with the 4 ohm resistor. Why? Because the current I1 has to pass through that whole thing put in a box, right? So 4 plus. So these two are in series, 3 and the 6. The result is in parallel with 18. And then the, the whole thing is in series with 4. Now, once I have the equivalent resistance, the current that is going to pass through that is just simply the total voltage divided by all the resistance, the equivalent resistance, right? 12 amp, and we got the same result now uh, by doing all the math. Was this easier to do? Well, if you know what you're doing, sure, you're spending less, less time to calculate I1. But if you don't know what you're doing, and if you don't, if you mess up any of the calculations here or the assumptions here, then you're in trouble. Whereas just following that algorithm guarantees you with the correct result. So it's your call. If once you get confident doing this, then you can start trying some of the, these techniques and see if you can get the same result quickly. And as you gain more confidence, you can just have that on the background, but always use your shortcuts. Okay, what else? So if I1 was the only thing that I was looking for, quick, I can get it without doing any calculation, well, these calculations. Now, the, this is a result of all that calculation. I just skipped step, but it, the, the proof of this equation being correct is actually a result of doing all that calculation. Now, am I done here? Well, if I1 was the only thing that I was looking for, I'm done. But I don't get, with this, I don't get any information about V1, V2, or any of the kinds that are passing through the other components. So what if I do want to know that? Is there any way to then move forward from this and start doing the, uh, the kinds and voltages for the other uh, components? Yes, so I know that the kind that is going through I1, uh, through this whole thing, is I1. Now these two are in parallel to each other. So let's see if I can calculate I2 and I3. So the current goes in, I have these two in parallel to each other, so they're gonna, it's gonna, I1 is gonna be divided between I2 and I3, and the ratio between I2 and I1 is basically, if you remember, it was the ratio between the conductance of this over the total conductance of the whole equivalent circuit, right? So in other words, the current I2 is equal to 9 over 9 plus 18 times I1. So 9 over 27, which is 1 third, times 12. That's 4 amp. So let's see. I'm calculating I'm, uh, I2 to be 4 amp here. I calculate I2 to be 4 amp there. So there you go. I can actually do use that shortcut to quickly calculate I2 without doing any of that. Uh, how about I3? At this point, I3 is really simple to calculate. It's just whatever I1 was minus 4, the KCL for that node, right? So I3 would be 12 minus 4. 8 amps. Exactly what I calculated there. How about the voltages? Yeah, sure. I now I now that I know what the uh, currents are, calculating voltages are really simple. I2 times 18 ohm is the voltage across, so V1 would be simply uh, 18 times I2 4. That is 72 volts. What did I calculate here? V1, 72 volts. There you go. Now, this is a voltage divider. Two components in series to each other. This voltage, this whole thing is 72, and it's going to get divided between these two uh, proportional to the value divided by the total. So V2 at this point would be 6 divided by 3 plus 6 times 72. And that's uh, 6 over 9 
that's two third of 72 and that's 48 so so I use the shortcuts to accomplish the same thing now in the process um, the difference here is that once you do this you get everything here I started by calculating I1 if I1 was the only thing that I was looking for or the equivalent resistance was the only thing that I was after um, I was done in one line of equation that I wrote if I needed more I had to do more but let's go back to the equivalent resistance again so the equivalent resistance in this circuit looking from these two nodes right I'm gonna write it here R equivalent is what I have down there it's equal to it's the 4 ohm in series read, the 18 ohm that is in parallel with 3 ohm that is in series with the 6 ohm. 4 ohm in series with the 18 that is in parallel with the 9 or 3 plus 6. Obviously, this takes practice for you to get used to what I'm doing here and I'm going to do more of this in the other circuits but um, this should be a good start I hope uh, you could follow my uh, math in both both cases this is the basic that we can always follow you can use tricks like what we just did or I'm going to call them tricks from now on um, or shortcuts um, trick has a little bit of a negative uh, uh, weight to it so now you can pick how you're more comfortable doing this this is always useful once you're comfortable you can do the shortcuts uh, thank you very much uh, we'll continue in the next lectures